All right, so I guess we'll get started. So we'll get started as we do at Yoga to the People in a child's pose, please. Start to settle into your space wherever you are, get set up. And you can turn your music on now if you're choosing to play some today. And just start to settle in. Shins, tops of the feet to the mat. Settle hips onto your heels. And then find a place for your forehead to rest. And just start to settle. Start to soften into practice this evening. And allow your breath to really start to get big. Drawing in deeper, fuller inhale. And long extended exhales, pushing all the air out every time. You have lots of options in child's pose, and these could be out wide, let your belly fall through, lots of room for breath. Or maybe knees pull tight beneath you, more of a shelf for your torso. And hands could come out long in front, palms face down. Or maybe they're back by your hips, palms face up. Something a little different in the shoulders, maybe more of a self hug. Wherever you are, let yourself get really, really heavy. Start to fall into your mat and your practice. Just breathe, allowing yourself to find a little stillness before we start to move a whole lot. And this child's pose is your space, your reset. So if at any point you want to return to it, return to your breath, feel free to do so. It's always available to you. And we'll take a breath together to begin, like we always do. So start to exhale all of your air away, S-H. Inhale, full, full breath into your belly. And all the way to the top. And exhale, H-A, sigh it out. Awesome. Now I know we can't hear each other's breath, but these collective breaths still bring us together. Just knowing that there's a whole community out there breathing along with you as you fly. So feel free to take them when you need and take them with the group. It's a really great way to keep connecting even though we're far apart. So let's take one more before we move. Exhale all of your air away. Shh. Inhale full, full belly breath in. And exhale, H-A. <sighs> awesome. Then you can start to introduce a bit of movement into your child's pose. Maybe you roll your forehead across the mat, iron out the space between your eyebrows. And maybe you let that motion travel all the way down your spine into your hips, just swaying. Bring a little life back into your body, little movement. And if your hands aren't there already, start to crawl them forward. Push them so far forward that your elbows and wrists start to pull up off of the mat, tending all the way up to fingertips. And just use that bit of pressure in your fingertips to press your hips back towards your heels, lengthening your spine. Draw shoulders away from your ears. And then let your palms rest again with just a little bit more length. And then slowly. As you inhale, rise to all fours, tabletop position. So shoulders stack over wrists, hips over knees. And we'll go through some cat cow. So inhale, belly drops, head and tailbone lift for cow. And exhale, round the spine, pull the belly in, chin the chest for cow. Inhale, heart forward, head up, look up, cow. And exhale, round your spine, chin the chest, tailbone tucks under for cow. Inhale, belly drop. And exhale, round your spine. And just take a few breaths like that on your own. Start to build that breath-body connection. Moving and breathing in your own rhythm in a way that works best for you. And you can always start to break it apart too. Maybe that means swaying the tailbone side to side. Maybe it's a roll through the shoulder. It's a bend in the elbow. Or just some barrel rolls through your spine. Whatever feels good in your body starts to work into those tight spaces. And when you feel those, try and breathe into them. Bring a little bit of space there. Awesome. 
And then next time you pass through a neutral spine, pause. Start to tuck your toes under. Then inhale to press your knees away from the mat, just an inch, engage your core. And then as you exhale, hips come up and back towards your first downward facing dog. When you get there, break it apart again. Pedal out your feet, then one knee, then the other. So maybe you sway your hips really far from side to side, get a nice side stretch in there. And try and wait even your hands. And just find a little movement, a little length in the backs of your legs, length out of your spine before we start to clean it up. So feel your way through it. Take a breath or two to really find what spaces you're working in today. And then check in with your hands. See that they're about shoulder width distance. Really spread your fingers wide. Ground through all corners of your hands into the mat. And then check in with feet. They should be about hips width distance, like your head could fit snugly between your inner arches. And then press your heart, your chest towards your thighs. Maybe at first you bend your knees, send your tailbone even higher. And then only when you found length in your spine, you could slowly start to straighten your legs. Draw length there too. Just working into it. Find that big upside down V. We'll come back here a lot. Then on your inhale, right leg rises. Go for length before height, really reaching through your heel towards whatever's behind you, like if you'd stamp your foot on a wall. Lengthening through the back of your leg. And then another inhale, we'll send your foot higher. Exhale, peel it open. Find some movement. So roll out your hip joint, roll out your ankle, bend and straighten your leg. Whatever allows you to bring a little bit of space into your right side body, right side hip. Find a little length, a little room. And then one more inhale, we'll send your foot back long. And exhale to drop your toes to the mat. Then with your inhale, left leg rises. Go for that same length at first, reach through your heels, straighten out, level off the hips, and feel for extension along the back side of your leg. And then another full inhale, send your foot higher, exhale, peel it open, find some movement. It could be the same movement you found on the other side, or it can be totally different. Just work into the space in your left hip. Find a little length across left side body. Maybe spread your toes, squeeze your foot together. Whatever feels good here. Then one more inhale, we'll send your foot back long. And exhale, drop your toes to the mat. Back to that downward facing mat. Then bend your knees, glance between your hands. Take a long walk forward to the top of your mat, hang heavy and forward fold. Let yourself be soft, so soften the backs of your knees at first. Let your chest drape over your thighs, head hangs heavy. And then maybe you grab for opposite elbows, add a little bit of weight. Or maybe you sway a little side to side, nod your head yes, shake your head no. Just allow the length to build in the backs of your legs while you lengthen your spine. First forward fold of class can be sticky, so be generous with yourself. Give yourself softness. And then with your exhale, release any grip you have. Check in that feet are about hips width distance. So that's two soft fists between your inner arches if you really want to check. And then on your inhale, half lift, flat back, long spine. So press hands into shins or thighs, crown of the head forward. Really feel for lengthening through the crown of your head. So see if you can draw shoulder blades away from your ears and together behind your back to give that little bit of extra length in your spine. Gaze is down to keep the neck spine long. And then shift your weight towards your toes just a little bit so you find that stacking sensation for just another breath. Inhale, length. And exhale to fold, release. Then on your inhale, rise all the way up, reach up, mountain pose. So two feet ground, two arms reached off. We're all pretty comfortable with that, standing on our own two feet, but shift your weight around. Where do you really land in the mat? And can you find that center of balance and stick to it? And then engage a little bit more. Pull up on your kneecaps, engage through your thighs. Tuck your tailbone, engage through your core. And then knit low ribs together, but lift from the heart space. And then wrap your pinkies inwards to soften your shoulder blades down your back. Find strength. Try on thriving in practice today. Soften your gaze. Take a breath. Then one more in. To reach up. Look up. Maybe back. And exhale to spill forward, forward fold, release. Soften, let it go. 
Then with your inhale, half lift, flat back, long spine, reset. And exhale to fold. Plant your hands, step your feet back, and pause on the top of a push up. We'll set up our flow. So shoulders stack over wrists and press into your toes so your heels stack up high. Tuck your tailbone to engage your core, just like in that mountain pose. Now we're gonna set up our flow, so we'll take this many, many times through class. If this plank is already speaking to you a whole lot, feel free to take your knees now or at any time. But we'll set up the first one together. So with an inhale, press the mat away, shift forward. Exhale, lower halfway down, hug the elbows in. Inhale your heart forward and up, tops of the feet release to the mat, upward facing dog. So four points of contact, two in the feet, two in the hands. And then as you exhale, tuck the toes, hips come up and back, more familiar downward facing dog. Ooh, so that's our flow. We'll take that a lot. That's the thread that connects our posture, is the thing that brings everything together. So make it what you need. It can be something to build strength, build heat, or it can be more of a reset. So find your own flow. And then let's put that all together again with breath. So bend your knees, glance forward. Step, hop, float to the top of your mat. Hang heavy, forward fold. Let yourself spill for just a moment. And as you inhale, half lift, flat back, long spine. And exhale to fold. Then inhale, rise all the way up, reach up, reach back through your mountain pose. And when your exhale comes, let it release you all the way back down, forward. One more inhale, half lift, seals it off. And then exhale to plant your hands. Step your feet back and travel through that flow. Upper push up to lower, upward facing dog to downward facing dog. And when you get back to down dog, take it one more time on your own. Just this modified sun salutation. One breath, one movement. And this is really a time to allow yourself to connect breath and movement in a really real way. So don't be so nitpicky about the postures themselves or even about exactly what the sequence is. Just think inhale, I move. Exhale, I move again. Allow your breath to be your guide. And we'll meet back in downward dog when you finish flow. So if you make it back there, if you're in down dog, keep it active. If you choose to drop to child's pose, that's great. Just make sure you drop fully, fully soften. And back in down dog, let's take a breath together before we move on. Exhale, drain your lungs. Shh. Inhale, full, full breath. And exhale, H-A. <sighs> Sigh it out. Awesome. Then with your inhale, right leg rises. And as you exhale, knee to nose, shoulders round forward. Use your core. Inhale, right leg long. Exhale, right knee, right elbow, look to the right. Inhale, right leg long. Exhale, right knee, left elbow, look left. Inhale, right leg long. Then exhale to step your foot in between your hands. Use that core strength. Seal your back heel down 45 degrees. Then inhale, rise up, reach up, warrior one. So settle into the lunge. Front knee stacks over front ankle, front toes face forward. And your back foot is 45 degrees from the back of your mat and really ground into the back edge, the outside edge of your left foot behind you. Use that to straighten out your left leg. Push left hip a little forward. Sit a little lower, floor it hip a little back. So you're squaring towards the front of your back. And it may be more of a feels like than a looks like, but feel for that scissor type sensation pulling your legs together. And from the waist up, it's just mountain pose. So find that lift out of your heart space. Soften your shoulders. Soften your gaze. With one more breath, sit low into your lunge. Reach up, reach back. And exhale, two hands to the mat. Step your foot back and travel through your flow. And back in your downward facing dog. We'll meet back. Inhale to send your left leg long behind you. Exhale, knee to nose, shoulders round forward. Inhale, left leg long. Exhale, left knee, left elbow, look left. Inhale, left leg long. And exhale, left knee, right elbow, cross the body, look right. Inhale, right leg long. Left leg long, exhale, step it through. Plant your foot between your hands. Seal your back heel down behind you. Inhale, rise up, warrior one. So settle into it, find your balance. And then find those check-ins. Front knee still stacking, 
back foot's grounded. And this time squeezing right leg straight, pushing right hip forward. Sitting low, pulling left hip back. And maybe see if you can close your eyes. Find that softness in your shoulders, softness in your face. And as keeping the eyes closed, add just a little bit of challenge to something that was once or maybe moments ago, just a little bit easier. Can you breathe into that? And with one more breath, flutter your eyes open. Inhale, reach up, look up, maybe back. And exhale, two hands to the mat. Step your foot back and travel through your flow. And when you find your downward dog, one breath, one movement through warrior one, both sides. And you can throw the core work in or you can skip it. It's totally up to you. But make this flow what you need. You know, you showed up today for an hour of time for yourself. So these are all suggestions. Find the yoga, the practice that works for you. And these one breath, one movements are the perfect place to do so. To explore your own mat, be your own teacher. And we'll meet back in downward dog when you're finished flowing on your second side. But take your time, breathe your way through it. You may arrive at a different speed than your neighbor or your virtual neighbor, I suppose. But that's because we all have different breath. We all have different bodies. So let your breath inform your movement. Don't be afraid to close your eyes, even if it's just for those small moments of stillness, the peak of a posture, the peak of a breath. Just think inhale, move. Exhale, move again. And we'll meet back in downward dog or a child's pose. And again, if it's down dog, keep it active. Keep it strong, press away from the mat. And if it's child's pose, really rest fully. Let yourself soften but we'll gather back with a breath wherever you are. Exhale, drain your lungs, S-H. Inhale, full, full breath. And exhale, H-A. I see we have some puppy visitors, very cute. <laughs> but with your inhale, right leg rests. Exhale to step it between your hands. This time, keep your back heel lifted for a moment. Plant your left hand down. Peel your right arm open for a little twist. Now really try and squeeze your back leg straight behind you. Pop your heel up high. So let your hips level out a bit. So you're twisting from your navel to your spine, or to the crown of your head through your spine. And reach wide through your collarbones. Try and reach out of the hand that's pressing in the floor so it's a little bit lighter for one more breath. And then exhale, left hand comes down. Seal your back heel down. Inhale, rise up, warrior one. And exhale, peel open, warrior two. So you may need to lengthen your stance here. Warrior two is a big posture. Right arm forward, left arm comes back. You're accommodating the width of your hips as they roll open. So turn your hips towards the side of your mat, towards the side wall, and sit low. Check in that front knee still stacking, and make sure you can still see a sliver of your big toe in front of you. That means you're not bowing in or out as much. And find that stack in your shoulders. So make sure you're reaching just as far back as you are forward. Sometimes the tendency is to reach a little forward. So find that perfect stack, shoulders over hips. And then check in with your back hand, see if it's really where you think it is. Nice. And take your gaze forward for another breath. Soften your gaze, soften the top back. Be strong from the waist down. For one more breath, sit low, reach wide. And exhale, two hands cartwheel down. Step your foot back and travel through your flow. Then from your downward facing dog, inhale sends the left leg long behind you. Exhale to step your foot between your hands. Keep your back heel lifted for a moment. Plant your right hand down, peel left arm open, twist towards the left. Feel for shoulders turning to stack. And keep popping your heel up even higher than you think. Yes, nice. Straighten out your back leg to level off your hips. Roll open through your spine. Maybe you can take your gaze to follow your top hand. As you reach up a little further, find lightness in your right hand for one more breath. Then exhale, brings the left hand down. Seal your back heel down. Inhale, rise up, warrior one. 
and exhale, sends left arm forward, right arm peels back, warrior two. Nice. And take the time to adjust the length of your stance. Any change you made before, you'll probably need now. But find that long, big warrior two. And take your gaze forward, sit low on your lunge. And for a moment, flip your palms to the ceiling. Let that soften your shoulder blades into their sockets. And then slowly, once you've found that softness, flip your hands back over. Try and feel buoyant from the waist up. Feel that lift, but grounded from the waist down. Check in that front knee's still stacking directly over your ankle. Yes, nice adjust. And then gaze comes over the front hand for one more full breath. Sit low in your lunge, reach wide. And exhale, two hands cartwheel down. Step your foot back and travel through your flow. And when you make it back to downward facing dog, it's all yours. One breath, one movement, warrior one, warrior two. And again, you can take or leave the twist. All these are choices that you make. You can also opt for a child's pose, opt for something else entirely. But let this be your practice. And don't be afraid to take those vibrational breaths whenever they call to you. I don't know who's there to hear you anyway. So H-A, ha's and hmm's, flutters of the lips. <sighs> Try and tangibly connect breath to movement. Those audible breaths can really help us form that connection really strong. You all look great. Love being able to watch every flow at the same time. It's amazing the choices that we make, the little differences in how we move, how we breathe. So beautiful. And keep moving, keep flowing. Think, inhale, I move. Exhale, I move again. And then when you find your way back into your downward facing dog after your second side, invite strength, invite softness, invite what you need. But while you settle into stillness, we'll take a breath. So if you're moving, by all means, keep moving. But if you've found that stillness, start to exhale all of your air away. Shh. Inhale, full, full belly breath in. And exhale, H-A, ah, let it go. Let something out. Awesome. And from down dog, bend your knees, glance between your hands, step, hop, float forward to the top of your mat. Hang heavy, forward. Let everything spill, let it release. Maybe you notice a little bit more length in the back of your legs after warming up a bit. Maybe you notice you can get a little heavier in your upper body after doing a little bit of work. Just take a moment to see the changes, see the difference. And then check in that feet are about hips with distance. Two soft fists between them. With your inhale, half lift, flat back, long spine. And exhale to fold. Then on your inhale, sit hips low, heart high, arms reach, chair pose. So sit back into your chair. Check in the two feet, two knees are still parallel, hips with distance. And then make sure you can still see your toes peeking out from in front of your knees. If not, slide your hips a little back in space. Nice. And lift from your upper back, soften your shoulders down your back. And maybe you smile, maybe you take a little softness in your face. What can you do to lighten this moment, to soften this feeling? What can you do to bring breath through your body? So for one more breath, can you sit a little lower? Find an edge. Inhale, sit low, reach tall. And exhale, let it go. Still forward release. Let it soften. Find a moment, find a breath. How quickly can you go from working really hard to resting really full? And on your inhale, find it again. Hips low, heart high, arms reach, chair pose. Now see if you can sit back into that space where you just left off, that edge you walked, and see if you can find that space and use your breath to stay. H-A ha's, H-M hoos, flutters of the lips. What can you do to bring breath through your body in a moment of challenge? And that could be in class, or that could be in the rest of your life. But how can breath show up to help you, show up to support you? For just another full inhale, sit low, reach tall, and exhale, let it go. Full, soften, release. Take a moment, take a breath. 
and inhale for a half lift, flat back, long spine. And exhale to fold release. Then bend your right knee a whole lot, plant your right hand down between your feet and peel open to the left. Turning shoulders to stack, two arms in one line. And sure, this is a twist from your spine, absolutely. But really feel for the stretch along the outside of your left foot. The back of your calf, your hamstring, soft. Just one more breath to reach tall. And exhale, left hand comes down. And then bending the left knee a whole lot, to plant the left hand in the middle. And peel open to the right. You can always tent up on fingertips, grab a block, grab a water bottle or a book or something if you need a little more space. But turn your shoulders open to stack. Straighten through your right leg to find that stretch just as much as comfortable. And one more inhale to reach and lift. And exhale, right hand comes down. One more inhale, half lift. And exhale to fold. And heel toe your feet together so everything comes to touch. Thighs, knees, ankles, everything squeezes towards the center. Then on your inhale, sit hips low, heart high, palms press, thunderbolt. It's a little different than our chair pose. But you find the same check-ins, checking in to see your toes, sitting hips a little back. And then really feel for squeezing everything to the center. What does that give you? Squeezing the abdominals towards the center. You get a little bit more room to sit lower. Feel a little stronger in your breath. For one more inhale, sit low, reach. And exhale, let it go. Spill forward, soft. Take a moment, take a breath. And inhale for a half lift, flat back, long spine. And exhale to fold. Plant your hands, step your feet back, and pause in the top of a push up. Here, upper push up. Point. Squeeze your legs together behind you this time so everything comes to touch, just like in that thunderbolt. And bring your right hand to the center, right below your face. And peel open to the left for your side plank. So rolling onto the outside edge of right foot, keep pressing into your left hand or your right hand to press the fat away and rainbowing your hips up high. And you can drop your bottom knee for a little bit of support. Or maybe if you want to challenge, float your top foot up. Float your top hand forward, frame your ear. And for one more breath, can you shift your gaze to the ceiling? Inhale, reach. And exhale with control, come back to center. Awesome work, take a breath. And squeeze your legs together if they've come apart. Shift your left hand into the center. And roll open onto the left. Rainbow your hips up higher than you think. And find an expression that works for you, engaging through your obliques. And maybe you float your top foot up. Maybe you slide your top arm over your ear. And for one more breath, can you shift your gaze? Nice with the balance, way to stay with it. Then exhale back down with control and travel through your flow. Awesome, awesome work, way to stay with it. Whew. After that, let's take a breath in down dog. Exhale, drain your lungs. Shh. Inhale, full, full breath. And exhale, flutter your lips. <laughs> Helps release heat, release tension in the jaw. Awesome. Then from your downward dog, inhale, send right leg long. Exhale to step it through. Keep your back heel lifted this time. Inhale, rise up, reach up, press a lunge. So very similar to our warrior one, front knee stacks over front ankle, but your back heel is lifted, so balance can be much more of a challenge. Think train tracks rather than a balance beam with your feet. And keep pressing into your left toes so your heel's up way high like you're wearing a stiletto. And squeeze your left leg straight so that you're turning towards the front. And that part might actually be easier. And one more inhale to grow really tall. And exhale, peel open, warrior two. Find your long warrior two, we've been here before. Take your gaze over your front hand, flip it skyward. Inhale, reach forward. And exhale, reverse your warrior. Your back hand can slide down your back leg, your thigh, or your calf for support. Or maybe you're wrapping it around your back, but if you do, try and give it a purpose. Really press into your front hip crease. So you're sitting a little lower in your lunge, and you can reach a little bit longer across your right side body. Feel for fanning open in the rib cage. Check in front knee still stack, spine, that space. And one more inhale to sit low, reach up a little bit back. And exhale, two hands cartwheel down. 
Step your foot back and travel through your flow. And back to your downward facing dog. We'll take it on the left. Inhale, sends left leg long and back. Exhale to step it through. Keep your back heel lifted. Inhale, rise up, reach up, crescent lunge. So take a moment to find your balance. Maybe it means making a little wider stance. Nice adjustment, yeah. Or maybe it's just pressing into your back foot a little more. Heel up higher, back leg, your right leg so straight. Nice. And then find that lift from the chest. Soften your shoulders. Soften your gaze. One more inhale, grow tall. And exhale, peel open into warrior two. Find your long, strong warrior two. Give it its moment. And then take your gaze over your left hand in front, flip it to the ceiling. Inhale, reach forward. Exhale, reverse your warrior. You can take the same variation with your back hand or you can try something else on. Let it slide down your back leg for support. Just try not to dump your weight there. And if you do wrap it around, really see if you can give it a job. Press you deeper into the lunge. Fan open in the rib cage just a little bit longer. Feel that sensation of spreading those little bits. Way to sit lower, nice job. One more inhale, sit into the lunge, reach up, reach back. And exhale, two hands cartwheel down. Step your foot back and travel through your flow. Yeah, that was at you, Kevin. <laughs> All my names are gone. And when you find your way back to your downward facing dog, one last time, one breath, one movement through warrior or through crescent lunge, warrior two and reverse warrior. And if you really like hate crescent lunge and you'd rather do a warrior one, be my guest. It's your one breath, one movement, your practice. So find what serves you. Just think inhale, I move, exhale, I move again. And if you feel there's a resistance to that idea, to that one breath, one movement, Maybe see if you can explore it, break through that just for today, just for right now. See if you can allow yourself to get lost in the breath and the movement without nitpicking the details of each individual pose or each individual sequence. Oh. I wish I could hear you all breathing, but I'm sure the breath is amazing. All the movement in everybody's individual time. Such an amazing thing. So, so good right now. And we'll all arrive back in our own time. So if you make it back a little bit sooner, make your choices. Is it strength in down dog or is it a moment, a rest, a breath in child's pose? This is one of those really profound times where taking a moment to settle into ourselves is so, so important. So if that's your moment, choose it, allow it to be. And when we do gather back together, we'll take a breath. So if you're moving, keep moving. But if you found yourself there, exhale, drain your lungs. Inhale, full, full breath. And exhale, H-A. Excellent. And inhale, send your right leg long on behind you. Exhale to step it between your hands. Seal your back heel down. And then inhale, chest halfway up, hands by your sides, powerful lunge. So feel for one long line from your grounded back heel to the crown of your head. So if your chest is sitting directly on your thigh, maybe just pull it up a little bit higher. Yeah, a little bit higher, very nice. And shoulder blades draw together behind your back to create a broadness in your collarbones. And maybe you can reach your fingertips and interlace them. And if you can, grab that big fist and on an inhale, draw your fist towards your back heel. Open across your chest, maybe you lift your head, open your heart, your throat. And then slowly as you exhale, release the grip, slide your hands forward, biceps frame your ears, extended power lunge. Find that long line from heel to fingertips and squeeze your core, use it. Inhale for length, exhale, SH, use your core. Inhale to rise, warrior one. And exhale, sigh and open, warrior two. Awesome. Oh, settle into your warrior two, give it its moment. Then take your gaze forward. Inhale to reach forward just a bit. And exhale drops your left hand down, right, or right hand down, left arm up for a side angle. So one long line between your wrist to wrist through your shoulders. 
And you can always take your elbow to your thigh instead if you need a little bit more space to breathe. So if you feel like your heart's looking towards the floor, just find this option. It gives you so much more length across both sides of your body. And really feel for turning your shoulders open. Take your gaze to follow your top hand if it's available. One more inhale to reach tall. And then as you exhale, bend your left elbow, drop it behind your back for half bind, find your hip crease. Take a breath here to lengthen your spine. And then maybe you drop your right hand underneath your thigh to meet it for full bind. But if you do find the bind, try and squeeze your arms as straight as you can. That will help you turn your chest open towards the side, maybe even turn it open towards the ceiling someday. Try and look as high up as is possible right now with your heart and your face. Yes, very nice. For one more inhale, think length in your spine, turn open. And exhale, release your grip. Two hands come down, step your foot back, and travel through your foot. Awesome work. And let's take a breath before we move on to the next side. Exhale, empty, empty lungs. Inhale, full, full breath. And exhale, H-A, <sighs> sigh it out. And inhale, sends your left leg long and back. Exhale to step it in between your hands. Seal your back heel down, tent up on fingertips, set up the lunge. And inhale, chest comes halfway up, hands by your sides, powerful lunge. Find that long line sensation from the shoulder, just the rounded back heel and drawing shoulder blades together, broadening your chest, and bring your hands together behind you. And on your inhale, draw them towards your back heel, open your chest, open your heart. Then slowly as you exhale, release the grip, slide the hands forward, biceps frame your ears, extended power lunge. Feel the length from your grounded heel to fingertips. Breathe space into the body with an inhale. Exhale to squeeze your core and stay. Shh. Inhale, rise, warrior one. And exhale, open, warrior two. Find your long, strong warrior two. Then take your gaze forward over your left hand. Inhale to reach a little bit forward. And exhale, drops left hand down, right arm straight up, side angle. Turn open in the shoulders. Find length across your collarbones. And check in that you can still see the back of your top hand. That's a good indication that two arms are actually in one line. Yes, very nice. And just keep rolling your shoulders deeper instead of reaching your arms. Nice adjustment, I love that. <laughs> Stack shoulders, find a little space. Think inhale, length in the spine. And then one more inhale to reach and exhale, drops your left hand behind your back. Find your hip crease, half bind. Or right hand behind your back, you know what hand. And then maybe after a moment, you start to sneak your left hand underneath your thigh to meet it for a full bind. But again, if you go for the binds, try and squeeze, squeeze your arm straight. So that's gonna help you turn your shoulders more towards the ceiling, towards the side wall. Think inhale, lengthen the spine, exhale, turn a little deeper. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, turn. One more, inhale, lengthen, and exhale, release your grip. Two hands come down, step your foot back, and travel through your flow. Awesome, awesome work. You guys are killing it today, so good. And back in downward dog. Bend your knees, glance between your hands, step half or float forward to the top of your mat, hang heavy, forward fold. Let yourself spill and stop. Take these little moments of rest whenever they come. <sighs> then inhale for a half lift, flat back, long spine. And exhale to fold, release. And heel toe your feet together, everything comes to fetch, squeezing at the center. And on your inhale, hips low, heart high, palms press, thunderbolt. So sit back into your chair, check in with your toes, make sure everything's in a line. And take an inhale to grow tall. And exhale, drags hand to heart center, elbows come out wide. Inhale, puff up your chest, lengthen your spine. And exhale, hinge forward and twist to the right. Left elbow to right thigh, palms press to the center of your chest, turning you deeper. Now it might be tempting to go for the flyaway, but stay here for just a moment. Start to shift the weight into your right leg. And recalling your crescent lunge, pick your left foot up, step it back, 
into your toasted crescent lunge. So toes to the mat behind you, keep your heel lifted. Squeeze your back leg straight. The balance can be tricky, but stick with it. Then you can go for the flyaway if you want here. Could even go for the bind. You fall out of it, get right back in, or just take a moment. Breathe your way through it, you're doing great. Find some space. One more breath, inhale, lengthen. And exhale, back to center. Inhale, rise up, reach up, crescent lunge. And exhale, two hands to the mat. Step your foot back and travel through your flow. Let's rinse that one with a breath. Back and down dog, exhale, empty. Inhale, fill, fill, fill. And exhale, H A. Ah. Awesome. And inhale, bend your knees, glance forward. Exhale, step, hop, float to the top of your mat. Hang heavy, forward fold. Take a moment. Take the softness. Maybe flutter your lips here. Just bring a little release into your jaw, into your face. Then inhale for a half lift, flat back, long spine. And exhale, fold. And if your feet aren't there already, heel toe them together to touch, squeezing at the center. And on your inhale, hips low, heart high, palms press, thunderbolt. You know where we're going. <laughs> when you found your thunderbolt, check in with your feet. Make sure you find length in your spine. And exhale, drags hands to heart center, elbows out wide. Inhale, puff up your chest. Exhale, hinge forward, twist to the left. Right elbow, left thigh, palms press towards the center of your chest. Use it as leverage to turn you deeper. And maybe your gaze can come up. But keeping palms pressed, start to shift your weight into your left foot. Sneak your right foot up and send it back to the back of your mat. Toes find the mat for your twisted crescent lunge. Way to stay with it. Awesome, awesome in the balance. And then maybe you fly away. Maybe you bind. But wherever you land, think inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, twist a little deeper. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, turn. Inhale, lengthen, then exhale, back to center. Inhale, reach up, look up, crescent lunge. And exhale, hands catch the mat. Step your foot back and travel through your flow. <sighs> and then we'll start to slow things down. So from your downward dog, inhale to send right leg long. And exhale to peel it open, just like the beginning of class, that big hip stretch. Roll out your hip for a moment. Maybe it feels different than it did in the beginning of class. Then slowly, when you're ready, start to draw your right knee outside of your right wrist. Send your shin across the mat for your half pigeon. So your shin doesn't need to be parallel to the front of your mat, but try and let it be the widest part of your body right now. So wider than your hips. Nice. And then just little check-ins before you lower. Make sure your back foot's straight and long behind you. All five toes on the mat. And then take it, inhale to really lengthen your spine. And then slowly, as you exhale, you can lower down. Only however much works for you, whatever feels good. But try and close your eyes. Maybe let your forehead rest somewhere. If the ground feels really far away, you just let your head hang heavy. We move a whole lot in an hour of class. And sometimes this stillness can be just as challenging, especially when we're in our own homes. So if you're anything like me, your practice sometimes right about now means getting up every five minutes to do something you forgot about earlier. But by logging in today, you've carved out an hour for yourself, for your breath, your movement, your mind, your spirit, whatever it is this practice gives you. So really try and settle into the softness. And that doesn't mean you have to ignore every single urge to fix, to move. But try and take a breath before you make a choice so that these aren't reactions, but intentions. 
things you choose to do right now. And just breathe a little space. We'll take a breath together before we move. So from wherever you are in the world, exhale all of your air away. Shh, soft and sweet. Inhale, full, full breath. Send it to your right hip. Expand that space. And exhale, HM. <clears throat> and take another breath or two on your own. And then slowly, just the way you came into it, start to work yourself back out. First, hands walk underneath your shoulders. And start to press them out away. And then send your right leg back behind you. And you could travel through a flow. Or you can always just find something that feel, makes you feel ready for the next side. So that could be a nice wide leg child's pose. It could just be a three-legged dog, move it around a little bit. It's a great time for a flip dog too. But when you find your way back to downward facing dog, inhale to send left leg long and back and exhale, peel it open. Find that big hip stretch, check it. See if it feels any different now than it did earlier in class. Move it around. And when you're ready, send your left knee to your left wrist. Chin across the mat and settle yourself into half pigeon. And again, just make sure all five toes on your right foot are flat on the mat. And find a breath to really lengthen your spine before you lower. And let yourself soften down. And then while you're here, if your mind does start to wander to anything outside of the four corners of your mat, just gently coax it back. It's like our bodies and the postures, we're not trying to force anything. But over time, as we coax ourselves back into alignment over and over, class by class, flow by flow, it gets a little bit easier, a little more natural. The same thing can be said with the mental part of this practice, with our thoughts. It's not about clearing our mind. Our minds are seldom ever clear, and if yours is, you're very lucky. <laughs> but try and let your thoughts pass like breath, like inhales and exhales, always coming, always going, but never held, never staying for too long. Let everything float through. And tether yourself to your breath as you rest, as you soften. And then we'll take a breath. Exhale, drain your lungs. Inhale, full, full breath, left hip this time. And exhale, HM. <clears throat> Let the vibrations travel through you. And then slowly, almost reluctantly, like a kid getting up from a nap, start to press yourself away from the mat. And send your left leg back. And you can travel through a final flow of class. We'll meet back in Downward Dog one last time. Really let yourself breathe through it, enjoy it. And then when you find yourself back in Down Dog, 
Just drop your knees to the mat, back to that tabletop position. You can go for a few cat-cows real quick. Inhale, drop the belly. Exhale, round the spine. And maybe it's a little bit more broken apart than that. But just come back to the very beginning, that softness, that connection of body and breath. And then this time, pause in a cow spine. So tailbone is lifted, belly is dropped, head up. And slowly start to walk your hands forward towards a puppy pose. So knees and hips stay directly where they are, but press your heart towards the floor. And you can leave your forehead on the mat, or you can bring your chin to the mat for a little bit more in your throat. Just opening the shoulders, opening the chest. And try and think about grounding your heart into your own space. This might be the only time you've carved away for yourself all week or at least all day. So really let yourself melt into your own mat, your own practice right now. And just take one more breath. And then slowly start to slide your hips back onto your heels, come into a child's pose. Drag your fingertips along as you go. And then roll your forehead across, iron out that third eye space, sink back in. For just a moment, just a breath. And then slowly, when you're ready, start to sit yourself up in the hero's pose. So hips on your heels, and sitting up. If this is really uncomfortable for you, feel free to take a cross-legged seat. It's totally good. It's a comfortable seat. And find a meaningful place for your hands so you could come palms up for receiving the energy around you for the people flowing from wherever you are. Or palms down to ground in your own space, your own energy. Maybe one to belly, one to heart, something really personal, but find a space that's meaningful for you and close your eyes. And just for a moment, ask yourself what got you to your mat this evening. Whether it's a routine of the last few weeks, whether it's trying something new, maybe a friend sent you our way. Whatever that little spark is that got you to roll out your mat, maybe move your furniture this evening, send a breath of gratitude there. It's half the battle, just showing up, especially now. And then another full breath, the most important breath for you, because no matter what brings you to this practice, any change you feel when you get off of your mat versus when you stepped onto it today, any change that this practice brings to your day, your life, that's your work. It doesn't matter what I have said, what poses you've done. Showing up, doing the work, that's all you. It's what you build. So a breath of big, big gratitude for you. And just sigh it out. <sighs> and start to flutter your eyes open. And send your legs out long in front of you for seated forward fold. You can do that in whatever way makes, makes most sense to you. And when you get there, rock the fleshy bits out from underneath you. So your sit bones are directly on the mat. Yeah, nice. You can literally move them. <laughs> and inhale to grow tall. And exhale to fold, reach for your toes, your ankles, anything you can grab. And you could take a really big softness, really big bend in the back of your knees if you want this to be more passive, more restorative. Or maybe you make it a little bit more work, a little bit more about flexibility. Think inhale, long spine, half lift. Exhale, fold a little deeper, belly to the thighs. And just take two or three breaths like that on your own or whatever variation of this you've chosen today. And then slowly release your grip and roll yourself back up. Drag your fingertips along your mat or your legs. Roll your shoulders up and down your back, just because it feels good. And then bring your hips to the center of your mat. Bend your knees to about 90 degrees. Glue the soles of your feet to the floor. So really glue them there. That's what's going to make this challenging. Just a little bit of core work at the end, because we did do some in the beginning. But our core work is just rolling down slowly. So the trick is keep your feet on the floor. It'll challenge your core. And arms come out in front as you slowly, slowly roll yourself down for five, for four, for four, for four, for three, two, one. Let it go. <laughs> Let yourself fall all the way back. Soften. And then bring your, bend your knees even more so your heels are right by your butt. Bring your hands back by your sides or out by your sides so you can tickle your heels with your fingertips. 
So we're just gonna set up for a little bit of bridge pose at the end here. So press your heels into the mat, roll your shoulder blades beneath you. And then as you inhale, press your hips up high. Just a little bridge at the end. And you can bring your hands together beneath, uh, interlace your fingers and squeeze your arms together, your arms straight, to pull your shoulder blades together even more. And really feel for pulling your chest towards your chin, sending your hips up even higher. Just one more breath. And then slowly lower. <sighs> Let yourself down. Awesome. Then pull your knees to your chest. Give yourself a big, big hug. You can roll around a little. You can roll around a lot. Find a little low back massage in your own home. And then squeezing your knees up tight. Start to drop them over to the left side. Right arm comes out wide. If you don't have the space, you can always cactus your elbow. I'm right up against a wall here, so I can. And just take your gaze over to the right. Just a simple supine twist. Just another breath or two. And then hug your knees back to center. Give them a squeeze. And then roll them over to the left. Or whatever side you didn't do already. Take that arm out wide or take it like a cactus. And take your gaze over your left hand. Breathe some space into your side body with this little twist at the end. Just wringing everything out. And slowly pull your knees back into your chest. Give them one last squeeze. And then reach for your, reach the soles of your feet together to touch and reach for your toes, for your supine butterfly. And you can pull your feet towards your heart and really press your knees away energetically so you're stretching out your groin as well as your hips. Nice. And keep pulling, pulling, pulling towards your heart for one more inhale. Then exhale, open up, happy baby. <sighs> Anything that's left, leave it here. So a whole lot of happy baby breath. You know I can't hear it, but it doesn't mean I don't know if you've made one. So flutter of the lips, <sighs> H-A ha's and hoos, giggles, anything else. Get one leg out from the other, move a whole lot, move a little bit, whatever works for you, whatever feels good. And then let's take a lion's breath together before we're done. And again, I can't hear you, but make it loud. Exhale, drain your lungs. Shh. Inhale, fill, fill, fill. Squeeze your face, close your eyes, squeeze everything really tight. Exhale, tongue out, eyes open. <sighs> I think I saw some lion's breaths there. And then release your feet. Send them out long into your final Shavasana. One foot to each corner of your mat. Hands can come by your sides, or maybe one to belly, one to heart. And just take a moment. Roll your shoulder blades beneath you so your chest is broad. And then soften everything. Soften the big muscles, your glutes, your thighs, your calves, your hamstrings, your core, your shoulders, and the little things, your hands, your feet, fingers, toes. Soften your face, your jaw, your brow. Release the tongue inside your mouth. And let yourself be still. Find rest. Thank you all so, so much for being here. It means the world to be able to still share this practice, even when the rest of life is so crazy right now sometimes. It's a wonderful thing to have such a community as we do and be able to take it online. That being said, we are donation-based. As always, we always will be. So give what you can, give when you can. We know that this time can be really hard for some people. So if you're not in a place to donate, share, spread the word, spread the love, invite your friends, your family, coworkers, anyone, have them come do yoga with you. And if you can donate, I will send a link in the chat box. And it's suggested as $12, but as always, like you always hear, I'm sure, no floor, no ceiling, give what you can. And finally, we will read, I will read a quote and we'll take a breath to end class. So our quote today is from L.R. Nost. Life is amazing. 
and then it's awful. And then it's amazing again. And in between the amazing and the awful, it's the ordinary and mundane and routine. Breathe into the amazing. Hold on through the awful. Relax, exhale during the ordinary. That's just living, heartbreaking, soul healing, amazing, awful, ordinary life. And it's breathtakingly beautiful. <laughs> I see more doggo friends. Let's take one final breath together before we're done. Exhale to drain your lungs. Inhale the biggest, fullest breath of your week so far. Bring it into the weekend. And exhale, let it go. <sighs> awesome. And start to wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes. Maybe take a couple blinks like you're waking up in the morning. Maybe big morning stretch before you start to roll onto one side. And press yourself back up to seated. Only if you want to. If you want to stay in Shavasana, you can do you. But I am gonna unmute us all so we can kind of say hi and what's up and whatever. I can hear your lovely breath and voices. You can stop listening to me. But thank you all so much, really, really. Oh, the other thing is we have a TT open house tomorrow. My bad, that's important. TT open house tomorrow at 10 a.m. and also 5 p.m. Those are Eastern time. Um, and then Wednesday at 1 p.m., also Eastern time. That's after the master class, which is another really cool thing we've got going. So check those out. Okay, now I'm really gonna unmute everybody.